Good morning. Welcome to Hope Lutheran Church for worship this morning. We're so glad to have you with us. A few quick announcements before we get started. Pastor Ron will be meeting with the men's ministry group tomorrow, Monday at 7 p.m. So please plan on joining him for that if you're able. We continue with our food and card collections and thank you so much for your generosity so far. You can find our bulletin online on our website at hlc.church. And if you're a visitor with us this morning, a special welcome to you. We also have a visitor's card on our website and would love if you'd be willing to fill that out so we can get to know you. And finally today, um, we'll be hearing from the presiding bishop of the ELCA, Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. She pre-recorded a sermon for this Trinity Sunday for congregations across the country to use as a reminder during this continued time of separation and isolation that we are church together, not only within individual congregations, but with the nearly 10,000 congregations countrywide. We hope that you are reminded today, as Bishop Eaton says in her sermon, that no one is alone. You are not alone during these chaotic times. As Christians, our denomination is committed to combating racism and white supremacy, taking God's commandment to love our neighbors as ourselves seriously. During the sermon today, you will hear a reflection on this commitment in the context of this Holy Trinity Sunday. It's possible that parts of the sermon may make some of us uncomfortable. That's okay. Pastor Ron and I have been talking about how uncomfortable we have been feeling lately and how difficult these conversations can be. We ask you to join us and to be willing to sit in the discomfort. Our faith is meant to be a great comfort to us, but it is also meant to call us out of our comfort zones. We don't have to look any further than to the cross on which Jesus died for us to know that sometimes our Christian faith will call us into uncomfortable tasks. Please don't hesitate to reach out to either of us pastors. We pray that we as a community of faithful disciples are open to having hard conversations with one another, trusting in the love we have for God and for one another, and in the work of the Holy Spirit within all of us as our grounding and guide. These are really challenging times, and we give thanks for your faithfulness to the gospel. We continue our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed by the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess, we confess that we do not trust your weapons, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace through God, with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn 413.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with our children's message, so come on down, guys. Well, good morning, everyone. It is Trinity Sunday, and I know that's um, kind of a different kind of word. So I looked up Trinity in the dictionary, and it says a group of three persons or things, and that's pretty much what the Trinity is. So I wanted to try to explain the Trinity because when we think about the Trinity at the church, we think about, well, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So I brought these three little hearts with me, and on them, oh, and I lost one. On them I wrote Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you'll see they're all the same, and they all are different at the same time. So let me put this together for a second. So I'm going to take the God the Father heart, and I'm going to put that one right in the middle. And then I'm going to take the God the Son heart, and I'm going to put that on one side. And then I'm going to take the God the Holy Spirit heart, and I'm going to put that on the other side. And let's see if you can recognize what this is. Well, that, my friends, is a shamrock. Well, it has three parts, right? The Trinity, three parts. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they're all together. And together, they make one shamrock, but yet there are three different parts. Hmm, so then I started thinking about that. All of them being God, all of them being together to make that shamrock, all of them being important. But the best part of all, is that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are with us all the time. And you listen today in um, the scriptures and in the songs that we've been singing, we talk about that. All three parts together, but yet one. So, I think that's pretty cool. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You can remember it in a shamrock, but you can also remember it in your heart. Let's say a little prayer together. God, we thank you for the gift of who you are, for loving us through God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day, friends. I hope to see you soon. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. 
And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and even winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day, and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. 
Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work rooted the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, 
closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise. And I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. Church, 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered into the mystery of the Trinity, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all of God's creation. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, and deacons as they lead the church in these trying times. With all the baptized, may they be strengthened to share the good news of Jesus Christ, and in prayer and action, strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Instill in us a deeper wonder for the created world you've called good, and a greater humility for our place within it. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders to seek wisdom and respond with courage and compassion to those most in need. We pray for community leaders in this time of unrest. Further the work of advocates who pursue justice in often ignored communities. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image we are your beloved children. May we recognize your likeness in one another. Hold in your loving embrace all experiencing trauma, fear, uncertainty, and loss. Protect vulnerable children and adults from violence or neglect. Provide what is needed for those lacking access to food, shelter, and other services. We pray for all those mourning the death of your beloved children, especially the Rickard family. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, you accompany us in sickness and suffering. Bring relief to all afflicted with the coronavirus and all those isolated now more than ever, especially those in prison or care facilities. Strengthen caregivers health workers, and all whose work ensures the safety and well-being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need this day. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us for the difficult work ahead in our congregations and communities. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that our places of connection are filled with your spirit. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all times in our lives, especially Vera Jean Davis. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I want to share that peace with one another in your homes, wherever you may be this day. To the staff, hello everybody. God's peace to you all. To our cameraman, thank you. But as, uh, as you gather here today, as we know, it's our, our time of offering. Uh, we again invite you, if you're able in these times, to, to give in some way. Uh, go to our website, hlc.church. You'll find different ways of giving there. You're also welcome to mail in your offering here to the church as well. At this time, we have our special musical offering by our musician Chase, as he brings us another one of his originals.
thanks for God's word. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered together as one through the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. We continue with our sending hymn 540. Go in peace, Christ is with you.